TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Navy Chief of Staff Rear Admiral David Sal Salma stresses that the right of the Jewish people to live in their ancestral homeland with tranquility, honor and peace remains a persistent struggle in the face of many constant dangers. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stresses that while Washington is keen on reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran, the latter's actions are diminishing those prospects. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett discusses with Russian President Vladimir Putin various regional matters regarding security and diplomacy. The Israeli defense establishment operates in all sectors against all malign actors and does so to ensure the security of the citizens of Israel. Speaking at a blue and white faction meeting earlier this week, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz reiterated his view that while the Islamic Republic of Iran may be regarded as Israel's main challenge, it is first and foremost a global threat. <laughs> כפי שפורסם לאחרונה סוכלה עוד פעולה תוקפנית של איראן שכוונה נגד יעדים ישראלים בקפריסין. איראן ממשיכה להיות איום עולמי, אזורי וגם אתגר למדינת ישראל ואנחנו נמשיך לפעול בכדי להגן על אזרחינו וביטחון ישראל בכל מקום ומול כל איום. The remarks by Jerusalem's top defense official were made at a time when the Israel Defense Forces is holding near-daily memorial ceremonies for the fallen troops of its separate military branches. During one of those ceremonies held by the Israeli Navy and the city of Ashdod last night, the recently appointed Chief of Staff of the Navy, Rear Admiral David Sal Salma, highlighted that commemorating the fallen is a constant reminder which brings clarity to the price of living in an independent, sovereign and prosperous state within the land of Israel. על הזכות להיות כאן, בארצנו, בשלווה, בכבוד ובשלום. הטלטלה הדרמטית סביבנו, הקולות המאיימים על שלומנו, מאמצי האויבים לפגע בנו, אומרים לנו בבהירות שאינה משתמעת לשתי פנים. עוד ארוכה הדרך למנוחה, עוד רבות הסכנות. Admiral Salma further asserted that the turbulence surrounding in which Israel is situated, namely the volatile Middle East, demands of the Jewish state to continuously bolster its power and maintain its determination. אמצעי לחימה חדשניים ושותפות מלאה עם יתר כוחות הביטחון וצה"ל. אנו נמשיך להרחיב את יכולתנו המבצעיות, נמשיך לפעול במרחב הימי, נכונים ליום פקודה ונחושים לפעולה רצופה בכל מרחבי הים, להבטחת שלומם של אזרחי מדינת ישראל. To ensure the peace of the citizens of the state of Israel, Jerusalem's top diplomat, Foreign Minister Yair Lapid, is scheduled to travel to the United States next week on Tuesday for a two-day visit at the invitation of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, as was reported by TV7 last night. In a subsequent conversation with a senior foreign ministry source in Jerusalem, it has been confirmed to TV7 that the talks with the American top diplomat in Washington will focus primarily on how to confront Iran's malign behavior throughout the Middle East, as well as a follow-up to meetings that were held in the U.S. capital between U.S. President Joe Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Israeli National Security Council Director Eyal Khulata, respectively, 
which focused on how to prevent the Islamic Republic from acquiring nuclear weapons. It is important to know that following the latter meeting, in which NSA Sullivan chaired a closed session of the U.S.-Israel Strategic Consultative Group, it was relayed to the Israeli delegation that while the Biden administration believes diplomacy is the best path to ensure that Iran never lays its hands on a nuclear weapon, if diplomacy fails, the United States is prepared to turn to other options. However, until that moment when the Biden administration determines that diplomacy has indeed failed, the United States remains committed to return to compliance with the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA, which is the 2015 nuclear agreement. This message was once again relayed last night to Moscow when U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken held a phone conversation with his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov. In a press briefing of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD, in the French capital Paris, Secretary Blinken highlighted the important role which Russia plays in trying to revive stalled nuclear negotiations in Vienna. The United States uh, and Russia, I think, uh, share the, uh, an interest in seeing uh, a mutual return to compliance uh, with the JCPOA. Uh, Russia has been uh, an important uh, participant uh, in, this, uh, in this effort, uh, and we talked about uh, uh, where things stand. Uh, we talked about the commitment of the United States to return to compliance, uh, but the necessity of uh, Iran uh, being willing uh, to do the same thing. Secretary Blinken further noted a warning, however, to his Russian counterpart that the runway is getting shorter and shorter on the prospect of a mutual return to compliance with the 2015 nuclear agreement given what Iran is doing with its nuclear program that is inconsistent with the obligations under the JCPOA and the constraints imposed by the JCPOA. Therefore, we are getting closer and closer to a point where simply returning to compliance with the JCPOA won't recapture the benefits of the agreement. It is important to know that the phone conversation took place right after the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov concluded a meeting with his Iranian counterpart Hussein Amir Abdullahian in Moscow. After their meeting, which was held behind closed doors, Minister Lavrov voiced his belief that the nuclear agreement must be revived solely based on its old parameters, which were agreed upon in 2015 and later adopted under UN Security Council Resolution 2231. Говорили по вопросам, которые связаны с совместным всеобъемлющим планом действий по урегулированию ситуации вокруг иранской ядерной программы. И мы, и иранские друзья, исходят из того, исходим из того, что путь к восстановлению договоренности, которая была закреплена резолюцией Совета Безопасности ООН 2231, лежит исключительно через ее последовательное, полноценное выполнение всеми сторонами на основе изначально зафиксировано в ней баланса интересов. Москва и Тегеран едины в том, что переговоры в венском формате должны быть как можно скорее возобновлены. Иранская сторона, как мне подтвердил коллега, к этому готова. При этом есть понимание, что переговоры – это не самоцель. Мировое сообщество ждет возвращения Соединенных Штатов в правовое поле ядерной сделки и отмены незаконных рестрикций как в отношении Исламской Республики Иран, так и в отношении всех ее торгово-экономических партнеров. Moscow's top diplomat went on to reject the U.S. position, which is promoted in parallel by the United Kingdom and France and to a lesser degree by Germany, that once the 2015 nuclear agreement is potentially revived, it would then serve as a basic framework for additional negotiations in order to lengthen and strengthen the deal to take into account Iran's ballistic missile program and malign foreign policy. Minister Lavrov went on to praise the growing economic relations between Russia and Iran, as well as the Islamic Republic's defined role toward the Western-promoted rules-based world order. Особое внимание мы посвятили двусторонней торгово-экономической повестке. У нас устойчивый рост товарооборота который, несмотря на пандемию, несмотря на нелегитимные американские санкции, за первые 7 месяцев текущего года увеличился на 42%, почти до 2 миллиардов долларов. 
и условились на этом не останавливаться, продолжать содействовать укреплению этой тенденции, развивать деловые связи, в том числе по линии наших регионов. Говорили о проблемах международной, региональной жизни, высказались в пользу выстраивания международных отношений на прочных принципах Устава ООН. Мы с иранскими друзьями отвергаем продвигаемый Западом неоколониальный миропорядок, основанный на правилах, который предполагает разработку таких правил Келейна в обход универсальных структур с целью впоследствии попытаться навязать эти правила всем остальным. Как мы уже не раз говорили, наши правила – это устав Организации Объединенных Наций. Скоординировали наши подходы на различных многосторонних площадках. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett held a phone conversation with Russian President Vladimir Putin earlier today, during which Bennett congratulated Putin on his 69th birthday, which is marked today. Per a written statement that was communicated by the Prime Minister's media advisor, the two also discussed various regional matters regarding security and diplomacy. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Angola in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hessen wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.